Does this sound like you? Let's find out if noisy knees is something you should be worried about or not. Prehab, Dr. Dorian St. Danik here. Welcome back to the channel. Contrary to common belief, knee clicking has no relationship to function, pain onset, or pain with knee dominant activities like squatting or stairs, nor does it lead to dysfunction or degeneration of our tissues. So in medicine, the term crepitus refers to joint noise. This can be clicking, popping, snapping, grinding. Joint crepitus is normal. Research shows that 99% of knees will make some sort of noise with movement. As long as your joint crepitus is not associated with pain, swelling, catching, or feelings of instability, we shouldn't be fearful of these noises nor apprehensive around the activities that cause them. So why do our knees make noise? Here's two theories. Newer research from Kotchuk in 2015 showed that when we stretch or flex a joint, gas is released from the joint fluid, causing a pop or a crack sound. This is known as tribonucleation. The second theory is the tissue sliding theory. Both joint fluid and joint fascia can create friction between structures. When this friction increases, we can hear noises such as clicking, grinding, snapping, all during movement. It's important to note here that both pressure and friction in a joint increase when we're stagnant. So that phrase you've heard, motion is lotion, is an actual reference to decreasing joint pressure and tissue stickiness that occurs from a lack of movement. If you want to learn about these theories, check out our blog post on this topic. While clicking in our knees is not a physical injury, we can work on improving our joint mobility, our motor control, and our strength to help decrease noise in the joint. So let's dive into some exercises for each. All right, so let's start off with mobility. We're gonna take a look at the exercise called tibial rotation. So this is best done in a seated position. If you can find a seat height that allows your leg to hang without touching the ground, that's gonna work really well for this. So the motion has us starting in about 90 degrees of knee bend or even deeper. And our first motion is actually gonna be rotating shin ankle and foot outward and getting into full knee extension. At the top, make sure you flex your foot and really give an extra squeeze to your quad. That's gonna help mobilize your, your, your kneecap, your patella, as well as give you a nice stretch through the calf. Then you're rotating shin, foot, ankle inward and getting into that 90 degree or even slightly further bend. So a couple things to look out for here. Don't let your hip rotate to extend. Try not to move the torso either. Just keep all your rotation right here at the shin. So it can be helpful to kind of take your hands and hold the lower part of your thigh to make sure you're just rotating from the shin and not the actual hip joint. So this is gonna help improve your rotational mechanics at your knee. So not just the hinge motion that's happening between our shin and our thigh, but also the rotation that's happening at the shin. So some of your joint mechanics are gonna clean up with this exercise, particularly in how you're aligning your rotation of shin on thigh bone. Consistency, frequency, and volume is really important here. So you can try this one to two times a day, 15, 20 reps of the up and down, and make sure you're trying to do this every day, especially if you find there's an asymmetry side to side you're gonna to wanna to work to maximize your mechanics and improve that asymmetry. All right, so next mobility exercise is the knee flexion with a gapping technique. So oftentimes when we have that joint stickiness or stiffness, it can come from a lack of knee flexion or full knee bending mobility. So using something called the gapping technique, which basically creates a fulcrum behind our knee is gonna help open up joint space and deal with some of that stiffness. So uh, in this position, you're gonna to wanna to need a towel. It's gonna to be very helpful to roll that towel kind of short side so that it matches sort of the width of your thigh and your shin, but it does have some thickness to it. And you're gonna take a supine lying on your back position. Make sure you really anchor that towel to be deep inside the crease of the knee. So really try to give it a firm pressure. And then from there, you're gonna lie down on your back. Now you have some leverage to take your hands on the front of your shin and then begin to bend your knee as if your heel is headed towards your glute. Try to hold this position for three to five breaths, focusing on a long exhale. 
and you might start feeling some tension or pressure or stretch on the front of the thigh, the front of the knee, the front of the upper shin. If you do start feeling any pinching in the back, go ahead and take a second towel, increase the size of your fulcrum, limit your range of motion, don't pull so deep into that knee flexion. So this exercise is basically going to open up space at the knee joint, but also promote forward motion of your shin. And those are the mechanics you need to get full mobility of knee flexion. You can progress this exercise still with the towel to be done as a child's pose. So now you're gonna get a little bit more of your own weight to put a little bit more force through knee flexion. And then finally you can graduate to tall kneeling, favor that side you're trying to stretch. Once again, consistency, frequency is important. You wanna try these one to two times a day, get that higher volume. If you're taking those three to five breaths, take that as one repetition, try 10, even 15 reps of this, and you're really gonna to start to see a change in that knee flexion mobility. Knee mobility is very important to our knee health. Check out our knee rehab program to find these and more options. All right, so for the first motor control and strength exercise, we're gonna look at the assisted squat. So we're gonna be going through full knee range of motion, full flexion bend, which is typically the scenario in which we feel our knee clicking, but we're gonna put a hip dominant twist on it. We're really gonna maximize support and help from our hips. So two things we're gonna try for that, getting a looped band above the knees, this is gonna cue your hips into external rotation and abduction as you push out. That's gonna target gluteus medius. And we're also gonna do our squat with a hip dominant pattern. So if you can find a doorway, a post, I've got a squat rack here. Sus suspension straps like TRX work well as two. Find support with your upper body at the squat rack, and then begin to take your center of mass, so kind of that pelvic region, behind your heels while keeping your shins vertical, so knee over the ankle joint. You're gonna wanna try to get about as deep as you can into this squat while continuing to put pressure and tension into the loop band. It's a slow tempo up, it's a slow tempo down. So I'm definitely feeling my quads, but I'm feeling a lot from the glutes as well. And reason why we like this one, it's putting you into deep knee bend positions, but all the tension and some of the help is coming from the glutes. So typically this will help with some of that knee clicking you might get at a certain position within the squat. Now let's say you still get your knee clicking, go ahead and find that position where you feel it. Let's say it's, hey, 60 degrees of knee bend. Hold here and really start to turn on your glutes with a static isometric hold. And then you can upgrade that uh, challenge by doing an oscillatory or a pulsing motion going through just a few degrees of range of motion up and down. And I'm starting to get a really big burn, really nice activation through my lateral and my center glutes. So when you program this, try 10 to 15 repetitions, two to three days a week, two to three sets. Or if you're going for those isometric holds, try 30 to 60 seconds, also two to three sets, two to three days a week. All right, so our next motor control strength exercise is gonna be the fire hydrant with a trunk or a torso rotation. So this exercise starts to get into unilateral or single side bias loading. So this is particularly helpful if you have your knee clicking on one side, but not the other. There's gonna be a, quite a bit of like lateral and rotational challenge here. So this is gonna carry over well to any symptoms you might have with stairs, uh, uh, single leg squats, going up and down stairs, any lunging type motions, anytime you're putting more weight through one side or the other. So you're gonna set up near a wall, uh, something, something that's kind of like a, like a sturdy uh, pillar, a post. I've got the plyo box here. We just need to put pressure into that sturdy object. Find a band that's a loop band. It can go above your knees. And you're basically gonna take a split stance, like a short stride split stance posture, where your rear leg heel is pushing into the box and your front foot is about one foot length away from the box. From here, you're gonna drop down into about a half squat position and start to push out into the band. 
You should already feel the sides of your hips, your gluteus medius engage. From here, hold the tension in the band and then begin to rotate your torso about 45 degrees into one direction and then 45 into the other. And as you get into those full rotations of your torso, you're gonna feel your glutes light up or activate a little bit stronger since your hips are also rotating as your torso and your spine is rotating. So a couple things to look out for here, don't let the knees start to come in, losing tension on the band, whether that's the rear leg or whether that's the front leg knee. And then also look out for any shifts in your pelvis and your hips. You don't wanna shift your, your lower body and your pelvis away. Now you've just lost tension at the hips. Really important to hold steady through the pelvis and through the thighs as you're doing your rotation. So this carries over really well to any time you're experiencing side to side stability demands, rotational demands. And what you might find is like, hey, if I have my clicking sensation at a certain position in the knee, let me find that position and then let me really maximize my hip strength, my hip control in that knee clicking position. So for this one, you can go two to three days a week, two to three sets, 10, 15 repetitions of rotation either way, there and back is one rotation. So try this one out to improve your lateral and rotational stability when you go into a loaded knee position. All right, so for the last strength exercise, we're gonna take a look at the hip thruster. Now this is a completely hip dominant motion, but it does expose deep knee flexion. So it might go through that range of motion of where you experience your knee clicking. And typically we're not gonna feel any of the knee clicking because all the efforts and tension sits in the glutes and the actual stress on the knees is quite low. When you set this up, you can use a bench, a chair, a couch, something that's gonna let you elevate your upper body. You're gonna to wanna to position the bottom of your shoulder blades at the edge of the bench. And you wanna sneak the feet out in front of you so that when you come down, you're able to actually still keep your heels in good contact. Not too far out, there should be tension on the quads and you should have leverage to feel like you can push through your heels. So motion is driven from the heel drive, lifting the hips to the ceiling, and the head starts to go back to rest on our surface as we come all the way up. And then the head is gonna come off as we bring ourselves back down towards the ground. One other performance cue, try not to let your pelvis dump forward and get too much extension from your low back, but rather think about tucking the tail as if the belly button wants to look up at your nose. That's gonna keep pelvic tilt underneath you. It's gonna keep tension on the glutes. It's gonna remove some stress from your low back. So the motion is gonna create good strength and work at your glutes, kind of center glutes, but you also might feel a stretch through the front of the thigh. When this is getting easy, you can absolutely progress to single leg variations and even single leg with a hip in the uh, weight in the hip crease to really get the effort um, to, to fatigue here. The reason why this works really well, you're exposing deep knee bends, which is where our knee clicking typically happens but you're getting so much support and strength from the hips that all that force or that pressure or that stickiness at the knee joint, the patella, is minimized. Try to program this as a strength exercise, two to three days a week, two to three sets, eight to 12 reps with no more than two left in the tank. So you may need some weight or resistance to find those parameters. So let's review. Joint crepitus or joint noise is normal and it doesn't have any relationship with pain or function. Knee clicking comes from pressure changes in our joint, as well as increased surface tension between different structures. To improve your joint mechanics, perform tibial rotations and knee flexion gapping. To target hip stability during knee flexion, perform fire hydrants and hip thrusters. To target strength in specific ranges, perform assisted squats with a loop band above your knees. Give these exercises a try if you're dealing with knee clicking and we will see you next time. Hey, did you like this video? If you did, you should definitely check out the Prehab app. It includes all of our programs, a brand new workout library, and tons more videos like the one you saw today.
Check it out by clicking on this link and get a free trial. Take control of your health today.